The vile stench of the shaman's hot, fetid breath overcame the nauseated female with a deep, soul-searing sickness, causing her to wrench her head backwards and regurgitate a slimy, orange-white stream of swelling gore over the richly woven purple robe of the infused acolyte. What did I just read? In 1970, 16-year-old Jim Tice wrote The Eye of Argon, a fantasy novella following the barbarian... Grignir? Grignir? Ginger. A ginger barbarian who has been run out of the town of Kryn after his scandalous activities throughout the Sumerian city had unleashed throngs of havoc and uproar among its refined patricians, leading them to tack a heavy reward over his head. Ginger journeys to the town of Gorzom, where he wholesomely occupies his time with a half-naked harlot, lopes off the confused head of a drunk guard, is arrested, and then angers the local prince by killing his advisor. Of course, Ginger gets thrown into the dungeons. Whilst all of this is going on, a young lady is being sacrificed by a pagan cult to their deity, whose idol holds the eponymous Eye of Argon. Little do they know, but their fates are intertwined. The Eye of Argon has become infamous within the science fiction community due to its poor writing, being branded as one of the worst fantasy stories ever. It is even the subject of its own party game. <laughs> what the hell are you, Gregory? Fellow the angered and courtier, as he hefted his finely combed broadsword. What's that sword? Or clumsily reached towards the pummel of his dangling sword. But before his hands ever touched the tough of the oaken hilt, a silver flash was sliced in the heavy air. The fuse of the savage's lashing right arm bulged from the glistening bronze hide as his blade bit deeply into the soldier's neck, lopping <laughs> off the confused head of the senseless tormentor. <laughs> Of course, this was released in the era before the internet brought us such classics as My Immortal. I may be a Hogwarts student, Hargrid paused angrily, but I am also a Satanist. And Half-Life, Full-Life Consequences. The pads were dead and the dirt was messy and bloody from head grab. So it's really surprising that the Eye of Argon is still fairly well known almost 50 years later. The reason for this is an interesting story in and of itself. The Eye of Argon was originally published in the 10th issue of OSFAN, a fan magazine of the Ozark Science Fiction Association. And at some point in the 1970s, author Thomas N. Scorcher ended up with a copy. He clearly thought it needed to be shared, so he sent it to fellow writer Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough with the cheeky note, here is an example of fine writing that we might all enjoy. During a dinner party with other writers and book dealers, Yarbrough brought out the Eye of Argon, and it was a hit with the guests. She loaned the copy out to one of those present, and from there, copies would be made and it would continue to be distributed. Over the years, the Eye of Argon gained notoriety and continued to circulate around science fiction conventions, with readings becoming a staple. It became a party game with its own set of rules, the main ones being Rule 1, read it exactly as written. Rule 2, when you start laughing, pass it to the next reader. Rule 3, the next reader must start at the beginning of the sentence the previous reader laughed at. Laugh before you start and you pass it on. Rule 4, anyone who makes it through a full page must pass it on. Rule 5, no rushing. A full dramatic reading is required. Acting optional. So pretty simple. Read it out for as long as you can without laughing. Otherwise you have to pass it on to the next reader. At some point, Don Simpson, Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough's then-husband, transcribed the story and stored it on an 8-inch floppy disk. Simpson attempted to ensure all typos were kept intact, though he acknowledges that it may not be fully accurate. This is the version we now find shared throughout the internet. However, there is one issue. Whilst the original copy was getting passed around and around, the last page went missing. The world was missing the conclusion. Then, in 2004, it reappeared, and the ending was published in the New York Review of Science Fiction, issue 198. The story was finally complete. Even better, a scan of OSFAN number 10 made its way to the internet in 2009, featuring the original text, 
allowing the online text to be corrected and bringing us this randomly included big C and some beautiful drawings. Listen, little bitch, I be thugging. All that is dope, I be puffing. Nowadays can tell me nothing. <clears throat> anyway, the Eye of Argon itself is wonderfully poorly written, and it is an absolute treat to read. It features ridiculous sword fights, wench wooing, ritual sacrifices, kicks to the nuts, pop to the groin, pop, pop, pop to the groin, and an epic battle between a gigantic man and a rodent of unusual size. Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. It is also the only thing I've ever read that not only has chapters, but also half chapters. After chapter three, you get chapter three and a half. And after chapter seven, it's chapter seven and a half. The story is chock full of horrible characters, excessive description, and bizarre word choices. The way it is written, it seems as though Tice had access to a thesaurus, but rather than choosing the most appropriate word, he instead chose the longest. For most people, the worst thing about the Eye of Argon will likely be the constant excessive description. Everything needs to be described in full. This might consist of one or two adjectives beforehand, or sometimes an entire paragraph will be spent describing a single person. This one, for example, describes what two guards look like. They die on the next page. Clearly time well spent. Even worse, one of the chapters exists only to describe a room and the inhabitants of that room. Yep, that's right, all of this just description. Nothing actually happens. Also, and, and this might just be me, but he keeps saying things are oval. There are only five times it comes up. Six if you also count the tightly rung elliptical circle or torches, which I do. But for some reason it just really gets on my nerves. For me, the worst crime that the Eye of Argon commits is the constant unnecessary alliteration. There are multiple instances of two or three words in a row beginning with the same letter, and it just breaks the flow so much, making it pretty irritating to read. My favourite is when Ginger cuts the arm off someone, causing it to start spilling a spout of blood. If this was poetry, then sure, the alliteration would probably be fine, but this is far, far removed from poetry. The Eye of Argon is a story that deserves to be read in full, and of course I would be a fool not to give you a taste of it, but if you would like to skip this, you can go to this timecode. Now, the following is from the opening chapter. Prepare to embrace your creators in the Stygian haunts of hell, barbarian, gasped the first soldier. Only after you have kissed the fleeting stead of death, wretch, returned Grigner. A sweeping blade of flashing steel riveted from the massive barbarian's hide-enameled shield as his rippling right arm thrust forth, sending a steel-shod blade to the hilt of the soldier's vital organs. The disemboweled mercenary crumpled from his saddle and sank to the clouded sward, sprinkling the parched dust with crimson droplets of escaping life fluid. The infused barbarian swi swivelled, swivelled, swi the infused barbarian swivelled about. His shock of fiery red hair tossing robustly in the humid air currents as he faced the attack of the defeated soldier's fellow in arms. Damn you, barbarian! shrieked the soldier as he observed his comrade in death. A gleaming scimitar smote a heavy blow against the renegade's spiked helmet, bringing a heavy cloud over the accordion's misting brain. Shaking off the effects of the pounding blow to his head, Grigner brought down his scarlet-streaked edge against the soldier's cruelly forged hauberk, clanging harmlessly to the left side of his opponent. The soldier's stead whinnied as he directed the horse back from the driving blade of the barbarian. Grigner leashed his mount forward as the hoarsely piercing battle cry of his wilderness-bred race resounded from his grinding lungs. A twirling blade bounced harmlessly from the mighty thief's buckler as his rolling right arm cleft upward, sending a foot of blinding steel ripping through the Sumerian's exposed gullet. A gasping gurgle from the soldier's writhing mouth as he tumbled to the golden sand at his feet and wormed agonizingly in his deathbed. 
Grigna's emerald green orbs glared lustfully at the wallowing soldier struggling before his chestnut swirled mount. His scowling voice reverberated over the dying form in a tone of mocking mirth. You city bred dogs should learn not to antagonize your better. Reining his weary mount ahead, Grigna resumed his journey to the Norogolian city of Gorzam, hoping to discover wine, women, and adventure to boil the wild blood coursing through his savage veins. It really is something that everyone should read, just so you can see how not to write fiction. To have the best experience, I would recommend reading it out loud, as that's the only way to get a proper feel for the text. I'll leave links to the story in the description. You may be wondering what became of the author, Jim Tice. Well, after the story came out, he did an interview with Osfan for their 13th issue, and he seemed to know the Eye of Argon was pretty poor quality. It is nothing to be proud of, and yet it is. Because how many people have had their first story published at 16? Even if it is in a fanzine or a club scene, how many professional writers have written a complete story at so early an age? Even so, Eye of Argon isn't great. I basically don't know much about structure or composition. And to be fair to him, he isn't wrong. Even though the writing is pretty damn poor, he should still have been proud of being published anywhere, even if it was just a fanzine. Going ahead and actually writing something, anything, is hard enough and takes a lot of effort. And being willing to put it out there for public scrutiny, well, that takes guts. Not only that, but the spelling might not have been as bad as it comes across in the magazine. If the interview is anything to go by, then the person who typed out the stories for Osfan couldn't spell at all. The interview is littered with misspellings and mistakes. On top of that, Tice himself was aware that errors were added to the story when it was copied over to the magazine. I admit I did make a few mistakes, but then I'm just a 16 years old. The editing that was done to it did not help it. In the future, if I have anything else published, I would appreciate it if it were published as it was written. Regardless, it was still poorly written and probably still contained a number of typos. The interview shows that even back then, his writing was being made fun of and the way he took it, well, he was surprisingly mature about it. Osfan. Also, the fact that they were kidding you about it, you took it so well. I think you should be given a pat on the back for such good sportsmanship. You showed real character. Tice. I didn't know that. I mean, it was easier than showing bad character and inviting trouble. I can only imagine what the reaction would have been in the age of the internet. The Eye of Argon didn't launch the writing career of Tice. The interview does hint that there may have been more stories, though these were either never published or have been lost to time. After the Eye of Argon came out, he wouldn't release anything again. In the interview, he says he's working on his writing, and eventually he did go on to get a degree in journalism, so it seems he did work at improving himself. There are some sources on the internet that talk about an interview with Hour 25, a science fiction and fantasy radio talk show which has had big name authors on it, such as Arthur C. Clarke, Frank Herbert, and Harlan Ellison. The show still exists, though they tend to only do two shows a year. I got in touch with Hour 25 archivist Eric Foss to see if I could get access to a recording of the interview. Foss told me that the tape still exists, however he is not sure where it is. Sources on the internet state that the interview was in 1984, however Foss says it was recorded in 1982. At the time, Foss tried to get host Mike Hodel to play it for their 10th anniversary show, but Hodel declined to air it. Foss told me that Tice had mentioned he was doing technical manual writing work at the time. He even sent Foss a signed copy of the story. Secondary sources on the internet state that Ty seemed to be a bit hurt that his story from so long ago was being widely mocked, and said he would never write anything again. Though there are some sources that state he may have attended science fiction conventions, and even readings of the story. Little else is known about him. I came across a few blog posts from someone who knew Jim Tice at university, but even then, details about him are minimal. He remained elusive throughout his life. On the 26th of March, 2002, he died aged 48, survived by his wife and two sons. In my eyes, one of the most wonderful things to come of all of this is what should always come from bad art, an attempt to make good art. This was covered in a video by The Word of Wolf,
And if you're an aspiring writer, be it someone who wants to write a series of novels, a comic, a TV show, a movie, or a video game, then by recognizing the bad and establishing an objective reason why it's bad, and furthermore how it can be fixed, then the likelihood of your suffering the same mistake is significantly lessened. Oftentimes the story ideas I'd like to write end up being similar to ideas I loved in concept but failed miserably in execution. Very few ideas for a story are ever truly bad, but rather have the potential for greatness depending on the writer. A good a good writer can make the worst story seem great, and a bad writer can make the best story seem like shit. In March of 2019, Grignir the Accordion, a retelling of the Eye of Argon by Jeff Batone, was released. This book is an attempt to draw out the better elements of the story and retell it so that it's, well, readable, because believe it or not, there is actually a story in there that you could do something with. I've had a read of the available pages on Amazon, and it's a lot better. Batone has included backstory that is glossed over in the original, and has structured it in a way that actually makes sense. There are also some in-jokes in there for those familiar with the original. It isn't the most amazing thing in the world, but it's a pretty good attempt at salvaging the story. The Eye of Argon has gone down in history as one of the best, worst pieces of fiction ever. It is a perfect example of bad writing and bad storytelling. The poor writing and the mystery surrounding the origins of the story and its author have likely helped keep the story popular for almost 50 years. In fact, it took a long time before it was found out where the story originated from. It wasn't until 2003 that it was discovered that the story actually came from Osfan. Personally, I think Jim Tice was unlucky. He had the courage to put his work out there to the world, and not many people would do that. Sure, he probably should have had enough self-awareness to not get something that bad published, but he clearly saw where he went wrong, learned from his mistakes, and wanted to grow from that. No one could have expected that one story from one issue of an obscure fanzine would end up getting spread around the science fiction community. The weird thing is though, for how bad it is, and the notoriety that it has achieved, I don't think it is necessarily the worst thing ever written. Don't get me wrong, it's pretty damn bad and is definitely one of the worst things I've read, but there are absolutely worse pieces of fiction out there. The Eye of Argon has a semblance of a plot, so much so that someone wrote a book based upon the bare bones of it. Could the same be said for something such as My Immortal? As Eric Foss from Hour 25 said to me, plenty of fans have put out stories just as bad or even worse. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video. This was a bit of a weird one. It started out as me wanting to actually just rip into the Eye of Argon, but the more I dug into it, the more interest I took in the history, and I actually ended up gaining a lot of sympathy for Jim Tice. He seemed like a really nice guy, and I really do think he may have been done a bit of a disservice. It was really interesting to look into and find out more, so I might do a few more videos like this in the future, I don't know. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.